الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear brothers and sisters we are discussing the characteristics and sifat of mu'mineen and so far so far we have discussed some of the very main basic fundamental qualities that a mu'min must possess must have according to the holy quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ahlul bayt alaihi wasallam so we discussed that aql is very important because it's the basis of everything and we discussed the marifat and yesterday we discussed the importance of marifat and how it can shape our life it can change us today we want to discuss inshallah uh, take it a little bit further and we want to discuss inshallah the importance of iman because after the marifat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the thing that a person a mu'min gets in as a result is the iman so inshallah we'll discuss that uh, in our urdu lecture uh, in our english lecture we will discuss some of the qualities that are required from a mu'min by amirul mu'min alayhi salam he has said uh, I, I mentioned that hadith yesterday i, I want to continue the, the same hadith alayhi salam alaykum salam today imam alayhi salam says he further describes the qualities of mu'min and he says the believer is such that his joy is evident on his face while whereas his sorrow is is in his heart so when a, a mu'min likes to meet people with cheerful face even though he the mu'min may not be happy from inside he may not be uh, uh, in a in a good mood but he would not show his anger in front of people he would not express bad things in front of people he would always be in a and when he appears in front of people he is always cheerful he is always happy so even though he is unhappy his unhappiness or sadness or his sorrow will always remain in in his heart you know the purpose the purpose is not to live a double life the purpose is to keep the society uh, in a happy uh, happy way or happy mood so for example if you are not happy and you show unhappiness in front of other people that kind of affects that person also most of the time it is it is a case it happens for example if a person for example does not have a good day in his uh, house home and he goes to the office and his mood is off and he shows that unhappy mood to other people so other people also get affected by that bad mood so a moment is not like that a moment is completely different he would even though he is not happy even though he might be sick he might uh, have lost something but he would not show his unhappy face uh, in front of other people he would uh, rather be uh, unhappy from inside and there is a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward a person because of this because of not showing his sorrow to others because by showing your sorrow to others you are not going uh, you, you're not you're not doing anything good because they will not be able to help you and it's a hadith actually if you you show your sorrow to a mu'min brother who is your friend he will become sorrowful he will also become sorrowful sad and if you show your sorrow to a kafir or your enemy he will become happy so you don't want to do any of the two you don't want to make your mu'min brother unhappy with your own grief and sorrow and you don't want to please your enemy so it's better that you keep your sorrow inside of your heart so this is one of the characteristics or sifat of a mu'min and then he says Imam says his breast is as is at its widest yani biggest heart but his ego is at his lowest so a mu'min is a big hearted person narrow he is not a narrow minded person or narrow you know there are people who cannot uh, live with other people for example when it comes to living other, with, with other people they cannot to to tolerate other people and they will have some bad opinions about other people and and things like that a mu'min is is not like that a mu'min and this happens because of the ego that a person has 
For example, if I think that I deserve something better, something higher or superior, and I'm not given that thing, for example, in a particular place, what happens that I start, you know, showing uh, as if, uh, you know, I've been mistreated and something like that. It's, uh, the the mu'min is not like that. A mu'min is not like that. He would not show his ego in front of other people. And it's not good. It's not right. And we have discussed this in our uh, lectures that a mu'min is a person who is very, very humble. And <clears throat> then Imam says, he despises high ranks and shuns reputation. You know, and it's a very, very important quality. You know, to, in today's world, if you see, people are going after these two things all the time, everywhere. You know, many of these problems, political problems even that we are facing in this world are because of this. Some people, they, you know, want to have higher ranks, key posts and positions. And they want to have a higher status in a, in a particular society or community. So what happens? They, that they would do anything to achieve that particular post or position. Just go to some of our third world, third, third world countries and you will realize that what would be a person not do to gain some power, to get a post or position in the government or in the ministry or somewhere. But a mu'min is not like that. He is not after high ranks and he is not after high reputation, etc. Though he may have lofty aspirations and ambitions, we have not, asked, we have not been asked to, to, for example, not have uh, lofty or higher aspirations in our lives. Okay, but a mu'min, for example, is, is a person who would not do anything wrong to get something, uh, some status or rank, rank in the society. There is a great difference. If something comes to you automatically because of your merit, because of something, uh, some qualification that you have, that's another thing. You have not, you know, done anything wrong to get it. But for example, there are people who would give, give bribe or who would cause some harm to other people just to, you know, go uh, on a higher rank or get a higher position in the society or uh, in a community. Now, he says, Imam Ali al-Islam says, his silence is much and his time occupied. And he, most of the time, a moment is quiet, is silent. And why is that? Because there's a very, uh, very, very good and beautiful uh, saying and quote that I had received, received a few days ago. And it says, speak only when your silence is better than your words. Your words are better than your silence, sorry. Speak if your words are better than your silence. So we have to judge, and this is what Imam Ali Salam has said, that a person is hidden behind his tongue. You would not know who a person is unless he speaks to you. And as he speaks to you, you would understand how much, for example, qualified this person is, how much educated this person is, and so on. So Imam says, a mu'min would rather prefer to be quiet and not give, give his opinion when he does not know about something. And then Imam says, his time is occupied. A moment is a busy person. He is not a lazy person. He is not, he's not an idle person. He is occupied in doing something good all the time. And he would find some good cause. For example, sometimes we may not have uh, something to do but a moment would not have such a time because he would always find some cause. And if you go and look for a cause, you would find lots, lots and lots of things to do in your life. 
it's I mean going for work and making some money and and so on is 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 not uh, th that any a, a mo moment would not do no a moment would do but <clears throat> it's not enough it's not enough just to go and work and and come back and do nothing after that no a moment would do okay this these things that we do for example go and work we do it for ourselves we earn money and livelihood we do it for ourselves but a moment would do something for others also and it might be, for example, not a, a financial help that you want to give to someone else. No, you might give something like, for example, you can teach other people uh, Islam. It is something that does not require you to have a lot of money or something like that. You know something and other people may not know that thing. You may go and give that knowledge to others. And it's a very, very great service. So a moment is a person who is always occupied. He's not idle or lazy. He is shakir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. If you look at the ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given, Imam uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you just want to Number the ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be able to do it. Just number, you cannot do that. Each and every single breath that we take is a ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that ni'mat, we would need more of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ni'mat. So we can never thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for, for whatever He has given us. So a moment is always grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is, he is extremely patient. Moment is an, a person who is extremely patient. And he gives some time to himself also. You know, this is very important. And even the science, I was, I was reading an article and uh, even the science now says it. Say, science says that in each day, in 24 hours, you should have some time for yourself only. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever time you want to have. You should have that time for yourself only. You spend that time on yourself, with yourself only, alone, not being with anybody else. So a moment spends that time for example, for accounting, for hisab of whatever he has done in, in the 24 hours. Because he does not go to sleep unless and until he has done the hisab of that day. Hisab of that day. So this is why a moment is always immersed in deep thought. Thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about himself and so on. He is prudent with his needs and he is good-natured and mild-tempered. His soul is firmer than steel whilst his ego is, he is, his ego remains lower than a slave. He is good-natured and mild-tempered. This is very, very important quality. Dear brothers and sisters, let's take a moment and Try to reflect upon uh, upon this quality. A mu'min, he is excellent in his character. Excellent is in his character. And this is what Imam is saying. He is good-natured and mild-tempered. His morals are excellent in any particular society. Wherever he is, people will recognize him by his character, by his kirdar. Hmm? And, and if, you, if you look at the Holy Quran and a hadith of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would find Iksalwat from Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Oh, Allah, Allah, at the heart of the mission of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, was to maintain perfect and 
per maintain perfect and nurture good akhlaq this was the mission of the prophet and he has said this in in one of the hadith ahadith. he says i recommend to you the importance of good morals good moral conduct because i have been appointed by allah almighty to accomplish this very aim yani the purpose this is a hadith of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, My mission on this earth is to perfect the akhlaq of the people. Because ibadat, yani worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or any other, other thing, if our character is not changing by those ibadat, then those ibadat are of no use. For example, if a person is always reciting La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Aliyun Waliullah, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Shukranillah, and so on, but when it comes to treating others, is a person who would mistreat other people. His character is not good. He is harsh. He is abusive. He is not honest. He is not truthful. He does not keep his promises. <clears throat> and so on. Such, such a person, even, even if he spends 24 hours doing the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, his ibadat and all the other amal are useless. Because the <clears throat> outcome of that ibadat Ibadat or coming to the majlis or anything that you want to say is the moral behavior, excellence in the moral behavior. If a person does not see any improvement in his behavior, in his kirdar and character, ibadat or any other thing would be of no use, useless. Let us, <clears throat> another hadith. The Prophet Allah SWT says, The peak of good reason after religious devotion is treating people with love. Yani when a person reaches the maturity, highest point of maturity, and he his aql is perfect, the Prophet Allah SWT says, The alama, the sign of perfection of the aql is that he would start treating the people with love. This is a sign of perfection of the aql. If you see per, a person mistreating others, you should know that this person is not aql. This person is not wise. A wise person would never do that. And what happens that if uh, you are faced with a difficult person, what sh you should do? What should you do? The Prophet again says, perform acts of courtesy to those who are worthy of them as well as those who are not worthy of them. Perform acts of courtesy. And be humble to even a person who is not a good person. Hmm? A person who is not worthy of it. Why? Hmm? Because it says, even if they are not worthy of it, because and even if they have no effect on those who do deserve them, you are at least worthy of performing them. Yani, and even if the person does not deserve it, but you deserve to perform good. You should perform good. You should not change your behavior because of the misbehavior of a, a bad person. No. That means that his behavior is having effect on, on you. If you change your behavior because of a bad person, it means you have failed because he has successfully changed your behavior. You should change his behavior by not reacting in a bad way. You do the best that you can do and you would see miracles happen. This is what our Imam is saying. And another hadith from Imam Ali al-Islam, it's very, very beautiful hadith. Imam says, for your brother, Mumin brother, offer your blood and your wealth. For your brother, offer your wealth and blood. For your enemy, your justice and fairness. And for people in general, your joy and your good, your good favor.
favor. So beautiful. For your, your brother, you give everything for him. Sacrifice, you can give him wealth and your blood. Even if you give your life for your brother, Imam says it's, there is nothing wrong in it. And for the enemy, you should not mistreat him. You should not be unjust to your enemy. You, just, you should not oppress him. Rather, Imam, saying, Imam is saying that you should, you should judge your enemy. You should treat your enemy, enemy with justice and fairness. Ajeeb. So, in our Ahlubayt alayhi salam's uh, madhab, there is no room for insolence. There is no room for anything that is uh, uh, shaitani. And because the noble character speaks any, the loudest, you can say. Noble character, a kirdar of the person, pro probably in a particular uh, and if, for example, society or community, people would not recognize him. But at the end of the day, this person is going to benefit from it in this world and the hereafter. And there's a very beautiful hadith and a story about uh, Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam. You know, his uh, name is mentioned in the Holy Quran, even though he was not the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mentioned that Nubuwat was offered to uh, Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam, but he refused. He said, if I have... Uh, given, I have been given a choice by you, O oh Allah, I would rather not keep Nubuwa. And he, look, Nubuwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it says that this Luqman, he was uh, very wise. So, what happened that a person, a young man, came to Hazrat Luqman alayhi salam, and he was shocked, he was taken aback uh, because of the honor given to Luqman alayhi salam uh, by people. So he approached him and he, he said, Are you the very Luqman? Are you the very <coughs> same Luqman who was slave of Banu Hashas tribe? Slave. He was a slave. Luqman salam said, Yes. Then the man uh, said, Are you the very same person who used to herd sheep? And he imagined. Luqman is a slave and his job is to herd sheep. Sheep, Luqman al Islam said, yes. And then he said, are you the same person, very uh, same person with a dark com complexion? Ah, Luqman al Islam said, replied, yeah, my dark complexion is quite uh, visible. You know, I can't hide it. It's not possible for me. But what is that really astonishes you regarding me? You know, these things are okay. But what is it that makes you, you know, ast astonished about me? He said, I am astonished that people flock to your gathering and eagerly accept your advice. Why is that? Hazrat Luqman al-Islam said, you can also achieve it. You can also have those good, uh, any, this honor, this respect by the people. You can earn their respect if you adhere to my advice. And then, the, then he has given these uh, pieces of advice and I would, uh, uh, I would uh, request the Mu'mineen to keep these things in mind. And they're very beautiful and they will make you popular. You know, we are looking for popularity all the time and it's a human nature and nothing wrong with it. If we are looking for popularity, there is nothing wrong with it. If with popularity... You know, our ego and our arrogance and those things does not, you know, uh, th those things do not affect me, uh, affect us. So he said, look, you should do these things and you will earn the respect of the people. Lower your gaze. Control your tongue. And you control your eyes, control your tongue. Eat that which is pure and halal. Guard your private parts. Adhere to the truth. Fulfill your amanat, trusts. Honor your guests. Honor your guests. Take care of your neighbors. Stay away from what does not concern you. There are about uh, 10. If you do these 10 things, you will never 
go wrong and everybody would would love you everybody would respect you lower your lower your gaze control your tongue eat that which is halal guard your private parts adhere to the truth fulfill your trusts honor your guests take care of your neighbors stay away from what does not concern you these are the noble characters that elevated me to the position he said uh, to the position to the, the, this position that i have and if you do that it's a guarantee that you will also be popular among the people and uh, there are many other things inshallah uh, from our aim alaihi salam from our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and inshallah we'll continue the same topic uh, tomorrow